Rainy days never felt so nice The sky beats just to feel more light Overcast wasn't overdone What we needed was to overcome Rainy days never felt so nice G'day everyone, Adam here going overland and it's summer coming and it's heating up and it's really getting dry. Um, I just want to do a quick little video to help you guys out what to do in a situation you find yourself camping and there's a bushfire because you might not be able to outrun it and I know a little trick, a little tip that could very well could save your life and um, you know it's nothing to be, you know it's nothing to take lightly, it's you know it's pretty serious stuff so watch this video i hope it gives you some tips uh, if there's anything i've missed because i'm not an expert please leave a comment below so other people can read it um, and let's all stay safe out there Okay, so there's been a fire through here behind me. It's only a burn off, it's only a burn off. It's not a bushfire, because if there was a bushfire, we wouldn't be here. Um, they can, the wind can pick up and embers from, you know, a fire a week ago can start up another fire. So first thing and foremost is when you go out um, in remote places like us, do some research. Check uh, any local websites to see if there's any been, been any fires through the area. Um, check the fire website, uh, the fire station's website for what the fire rating is in that area. Is it extreme rating? You know, and it's a lot, little road like this here. You know, you don't want to be caught out on a road like this. Um, you might not be able to outrun it. Fires travel nine times faster uphill than down. So, you know, you don't want to be stuck at the top of the hill either. You're probably safer in a valley. Now what happened to me and Larissa one year, we were camping out all by ourselves, in really remote property. Um, and we started a little fire like you do in some, when you're camping, you know, you gotta have a nice little fire. And the grass around it started to burn. Like it was only a little, little bit of, you know, starting. We put it out and it spread again a little bit more. And you know, we got so worried, we actually put the fire out. So in summertime in these dry conditions, even if there's not a fire ban, use some common sense. If, if it's really dry and you're isolated, have a think about what would happen if your fire got out of control. Could you put it out? Probably not. Uh, how long will it burn for? Are you putting other people's lives at risk? Because that's a big thing. You don't want to be responsible for someone's death, even if it was an accident, okay? So now it's heating up and drying up. There are nice campgrounds where it's safe to have fires. If you're remote camping like we do a lot, you might not have a fire, okay? As, as much as the atmosphere is nice with a fire, a little fire, you don't want a big fire behind you. Little side note, if you do have a fire and you're permitted to have a fire, and it's safe to have a fire, make sure you put it out completely before you leave or go to bed that night. Don't leave a fire unattended in dry conditions, in super dry conditions. You shouldn't do it any time of the year, but if it's super dry, Definitely don't do it. Uh, I know a lot of people, you'll have a few drinks and let the fire burn down to, you know, your ambers and, you know, there'll be a nice glow at night time when you're going to bed. When it's super dry, don't do that because the wind can pick up like it has today. Um, anything can happen. Get your dish water, pour it on the ambers, get it completely out. Uh, when you're leaving, 100% make sure that it's completely out and cold. You know, you don't want you don't want it to start up and flare up. And I've seen it before, I've pulled into a campsite and a fire is starting to burn again. Uh, and I guarantee the people that left it there, they thought it was going out completely. Do that and make sure as well, put it out because if there's kids running around bare feet like they normally do camping, you don't want some kid getting hurt on a fire. So put your fires out completely. Use your dish water, use grey water, go down to the creek if there's a creek there, get a bucket of water, pour it on those embers and get it out completely. So another thing, if you're camping and there's a creek uh, nearby um, with water in it, uh, yeah, that might be a great option. Get down to that water, 
get in the water. If there's a bushfire, you know, don't worry about your gear. Don't worry about packing up camp. Get to the water. Your lives are so much more important than your, your gear and your, you know, your car and all that's probably insured for a fire like that, a bushfire. Um, your life's not, you know, if you, if you get third degree burns on your body, uh, if you die from a fire, you know, that's game over, right? Don't worry about your gear. Okay, if there's a fire coming, forget your gear. Just get out of there as fast as you can. Hopefully you've done some research and you know there's a few different tracks out of that campsite or that area you're in. Um, if not, what do you do? You might think you might be able to outrun the fire. Look, if you're on a high speed track, definitely worth a shot. If you're on a steep winding forward drive track where it's slow going, your chances of outrunning a fire are very, very low. Um, even on foot, you've probably got no chance in wind, windy conditions. Um, like I said, fire travels nine times faster uphill than down. So if there's a fire up behind you, best bet is head downhill. Hopefully there's a stream or river at the bottom. Um, you know, it's really important to, to think ahead on these places because you know, what happens is you gotta think what could happen? How do I get out of this situation? All right, so one of the tips I can give you guys is, um, is something I learned years ago watching an old movie. All right, so I'm just gonna cut into the video here again. I want this video to be correct uh, or as correct as possible that I can get it. Um, I, I sent this video to my dad to have a look at because he's in, been in the real fire brigade for quite a few years and he's got a little bit more experience on this matter than I do. So what he was suggesting to me um, as a good resort is to be in the vehicle, windows up, doors closed, uh, get as low as possible in that vehicle and put a blanket over you. So I was sort of thinking, okay, what would we do? How would we go about that? Uh, one thing what we normally carry in winter is our dryer bones. So maybe that's something we should be carrying in summertime as well because they are perfect to go over you. They are sort of not a flammable material. Like you don't want to put something like on you that, that would melt. Yeah, mm. they're like a leather material. Uh, you want a natural material, uh, a, a thick natural blanket, not, not a nylon blanket. Uh, which a lot of the stuff is now that we carry around. It's not a natural product like leather. Um, so let me know what you think. I'll, I'll keep this next part in the video, which was my thinking, which might be incorrect. So I'm going to put a big warning on the bottom of this that it might be incorrect information. But this is always what I have had in my mind as a last resort. Um, but Dad being in the real fire brigade and with their training, they are trained to stay in the vehicle, lowest possible blankets over them. My worry about that as, a, as an overlander is the amount of fuel we carry. We might be carrying gas bottles. Um, yeah, so, it, and also with modern day vehicles, you know, you don't want to be locked in that vehicle. So, an old vehicle like this, no problem at all. It's not going to, the actuators aren't going to fire and lock you in that vehicle. A modern vehicle, I don't know, tell me your thoughts. Is something happening, like if your wiring harness got burnt, is this something that possibly could lock you in the vehicle? I don't know. All right, so I'd love to hear everyone's thoughts on this matter, which way you would think. Um, probably my dad's way is the right way. Uh, get low on the vehicle, windows up, blanket over you, wait for the fire to pass, and then probably get out of the vehicle straight away, as soon as you can, get out of that vehicle. Because if there's um, you know, a fire burning under the vehicle where the gas tanks are, uh, the wheels are burning, you know, you want to be out of that vehicle straight away. Uh, if that's the way you guys would think would be the safest thing or what I'm going to say next, uh, which by the sounds of it, it's probably wrong information and maybe dangerous information to put out there. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I will put a warning label under my next bit of information. I don't know if the, the young people watching this might not remember, but the older generation will. Uh, the gods must be crazy. Uh, they're based in Africa and uh, a plane was flying overhead and they dropped a bottle and hit some guy in the head and yeah it was a pretty cool movie um, but one of the tips I got from that movie was they were tied up and running from a fire and one of the local kids he stopped the adults from running and they didn't know what was going on there was a fire behind him right behind him and what he did was he stopped he got the fire you know on a stick from behind him and lit a fire in front of them so the fire continued off in front of them and then they got onto the burnt stuff. So if this is life or death and you cannot outrun the fire and the fire is coming towards you and there's no fire break between you and the fire, 
you know, this could save your life. You know, starting a little fire, you know, you gotta be thinking though, all right, because you don't want your fire to be the cause of something if the fire that's coming towards you is a controlled burn, all right? So take my words lightly or into consideration. If it's life or death, uh, I would do it. Start a fire, let the fire burn through, and then get onto the burnt stuff. Because if it's gonna save you from the fire that's coming at you, a roaring fire, and there's no other option, um, you know, that's a good tip to have in the back of your mind, okay? Um, like I said, you do not want to be responsible for, you know, the fire that's coming at you is a controlled fire and it's going to stop burning in the creek. And you, you, just set a, you just started a fire that's going to burn into a town or houses, all right? Life or death, that, if that fire is not stopping and you got to save your life, um, it's something that I would do. Another big thing to consider is the wind conditions as well. Um, is the wind picking up? Is there going to be electrical storms? Two recipes for disaster, wind and, and those electrical storms, starting bushfires um, that just, you know, can't be contained. So do some research, make sure you know where you're going, uh, what the conditions are like, what's the predicted fire level going to be. Um, yeah, don't go into an area if it's unsafe, especially when it's super dry, super hot. You know, go find somewhere by a beach, by a river. These bush campsites can be extremely dangerous in summertime while there's fires going. All right, guys, hope those tips help you out. Um, hope you just start the ball rolling in your mind of what to think about during summer and this bushfire season. Hope other people leave tips below so other people can do some research and other people's ideas and see what um, other people are thinking. Just stay safe out there. That's the main important thing. Adventuring is fun. Going to new areas is fun, but your safety is more important than having an adventure, okay, guys? So. Stay safe out there, stay well, and uh, enjoy your travels. Cheers, guys.